Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Whilst I've been away, I've had a few messages asking about our lovely new puppy. He's not so new anymore, not so little and puppyish anymore. But we have a, um, a Bernese mountain dog across Newfoundland. He's now seven and a half months old and has grown a lot since you've last seen him. So I've just been putting together some clips for a little update for you. If you're not at all interested in dogs and you just want to skip this bit, you think I can come here for dog content, <laughs> then, then what I'll do is I'll put the time code, the time on the screen for the end of this bit so you can just, so you can just skip this bit and go on to there if you'd, if you'd prefer. Um, oh, Merlin, shh. Be cute without the noise. Merlin, Merlin. No more. Stop filming me, Merlin. <laughs> but he's cute. Let's get the Christmas decoration away from you, Merlin. Oh, is it my turn? Shall I have it? Leave. Oh my goodness, having Merlin has been an utter delight these last few months. He is so adorable still and I just couldn't imagine a Christmas without a dog in the house. It would have just felt so empty so I'm really glad we found him before then. I have to admit, and I had completely forgotten how much time and hard work having Gentle. a puppy is. When we were browsing uh, puppy adverts, there were so many listed at about four to five months old. And the reason is that's the age they are definitely at their naughtiest. Um, yeah, Merlin definitely tried testing our boundaries. He wasn't doing as he was told, jumping up at people and getting things off the kitchen worktop. Yeah, that was a little bit of a trying time with him, but we are through that now, on the whole. Thank goodness. His training is really good in a training situation, but in real life situations, there is plenty of work to do still. That's where the <laughs> lockdown has been a difficulty as he hasn't had much socialization as he should have done. He's only, he's only, yeah, he's only just met our families. And it's such a shame that, uh, particularly for the nieces and nephews, that they didn't get to meet him while he was still a small little fluffy puppy. <laughs> the 24th of January 2021, and it's Merlin's first snow, and he just wants to eat it all. I think we've got to do more training with walks on a lead around roads. He's not road sense safe yet. <laughs> Good morning. We have come for a walk. It's a lovely sunny day. The first sunny weekend day we've had in a very long time. And rain's brought me here. We're apparently on the Dinder estate. And the view all the way around there of Somerset, it's just amazing. <laughs> so now we are on top of the viaduct and we were down there just now. Are you enjoying this walk? Yeah. We actually read on a Facebook group from someone else that was going through a difficult time and someone replied that um, that at eight months old <laughs> that's when their adult teeth have all come through and that's also when their behaviour improves. 
and I have to say that seems to be accurate we're just coming up to that now and Merlin is so much better paved now which is quite <laughs> a relief I have to say um, yeah he, he's, he's pretty good now most of the time he's got a lovely <laughs> personality and is getting more affectionate by the day he just loves a cuddle and he is so much part of the family now It's prickly in there. <gasps> I don't believe it. <laughs> you found it. You found it. <laughs> Just give him a little bit at a time. It will probably sure? yeah. It will... There's one more thing on my to-do list this evening, and that is I've got to write a description for this top. Oh, you can't quite see it. I'll. Uh show you in a sec. I've done the skirt already but I still need to do the top. I need to get the measurements to just describe the fabric and that sort of thing. That's one thing I do need to get fast at in my business. I seem to take ages writing descriptions but because it's all online I do feel like I need to be thorough and I was looking at a website recently and it was, I don't know, was it, it might have even been the Debenhams clothing sale online but I was shocked at how little information there is when you're buying something you can't see in person you want to know where the zip is or whether it's got elasticated waist and even information like that is on there so I don't know I kind of feel like that sort of thing is necessary so I put it all in the description this won't take long it's quite a fairly simple top well I think it won't take long uh, no me it'll still take longer than I expect it well <laughs> and that's another thing it, on online proper shops you have to hunt for the fabric and that's really important to me I don't want to be buying polyester if I can help it so I make it quite clear in my descriptions what the fabric is or at least what I think it is and um, oh, I always say what I when I'm not sure yeah so let me see if I can Let's see if I can show it to you close up. That's the top. Um, there's some really exquisite metallic embroidery in this panel here. It um, feels so silky and lovely. I've got some lace tying up at the back there. I was, I'm really quite inspired by Downton Abbey at the moment. Um, I watched, I can't remember, when did I start watching Downton Abbey? It was around Christmas time, I think, maybe. Maybe it was as long ago as Christmas time. I can't really remember, but I was looking at some of their costumes, particularly in the first series. I like the ones early on, especially. And I thought, oh yeah, I think I could do some of that, particularly as the embellishments are quite similar to the stuff to the sort of thing I have anyway, ready to reuse. So yeah, I'm going down a little bit of a early 1910s Edwardian sort of look at the moment. And I feel like that's, this top has got that sort of shape as well. So yeah, and that's what I'm doing with uh, Threads of a Fairy Tale at the moment. If you're new here, um, as I haven't been around a while, you might not know, I have a clothing business called Threads of a Fairy Tale, where I upcycle and reuse fabrics from clothing that's not wanted anymore and uh, create create new ones with a fairy tale sort of a theme going on there. And the website will always be linked below if you're ever interested in checking that out if you're interested in that sort of thing. I have been busy this year. We've got a skirt here that took me hours, took me days. But this whole, whole bag here, not all of it I made this year. Some of this is, um, or is it? Maybe it is actually. No, I can see a couple of things I made last year. And in fact, a couple of things from the year before. But this bag is all stuff that I haven't photographed for the website yet. I'm so behind on that. But it's so hard during winter to photograph nice things nicely. It never looks quite right in a studio with studio lighting. Not that we have a studio, but we could do something with our living room with uh, 
velvet curtains. We've got plenty of velvet curtains. Um, but I don't know. I like I like them done outdoors. And as most of that stuff, I'm going to have to ask Rain and Jude to model for me. I always feel it's unfair. I feel too guilty to um, get them outside in the freezing cold temperatures. Even if we get some nice winter weather, which is quite rare, they'll be so cold, so cold in these dresses. So that'll be definitely coming up in a video soon, I hope. We'll be, I'll have to arrange a photo shoot day. The weather has been really quite nice today, so hopefully that will be soon. Okay, I'm gonna crack on with that description because then I can get this whole outfit off the mannequin and get started on something new tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. So it's the annual cutting of the willow. <laughs> I feel like I show you this every year and every year I do it a bit too late in the year as well I should have done this in winter but better late than never and as you can see the willow is getting a bit out of hand so I do need to um, come out here and uh, get some of these I don't know with a saw I suppose and get some of the really thick bits out so yeah down in the lower garden cutting the willow and this time this year I'm going to do collect some of it for to be kindling for our Rayburn for next winter and some of it I'm gonna have a go at some willow not really willow weaving but just using the willow in the garden for some support some little walls little um, flower beds markers sort of thing I hadn't really planned on doing this today but it's such a beautiful day I just had to come out in the garden and do something I shouldn't have worn black. In the sunshine, it's really quite warm. <laughs> so yeah, now I'm gonna drag all this up to the our main garden and um, get myself a drink of water and then get to work. Now you can, when I've got warning Merlin. So here's my pile of willow. Just realized I need to go back and get the loppers so I may as well grab one or two more sticks while I'm there. I am now fueled by lunch and we've got some clouds in the sky for some shade which is nice because it was actually a bit too hot earlier. And this is the section here I'm talking about. It's just a narrow strip where I planted some lavender last year and some bluebells have grown up on their own and we've got some wild onion growing here as well but I just want to, it's not a very defined area, I'll give it a bit of a weed and yeah I'd like to put across here just this, just something so that it's not accidentally mown or strimmed off so uh, that's the plan and I've now slipped on some nice gardening clogs that my mum bought me for Christmas <laughs> They're a great colour. And uh, yeah, Chris has just gone to get his vaccine, so it'll be interesting. Obviously, he probably, I'm saying obviously, if you're um, new here, you won't know, but um, Chris actually had the coronavirus quite early on in the first wave in May. And, um, and he had it quite badly, so he probably is naturally immune, but uh, he ought to get it anyway, just to be on the safe side. Hopefully I'll be cooled up soon and I'll be able to get mine as well. But in the meantime, we're obviously being as careful as possible. Merlin back.
there we are. I think that's done. That was a really easy little project if any of you want to have a go. If you've got some willow you can get your hands on. But yeah, that'll do nicely. That'll just it just needed a little barrier between the lawn and what will become more of a flower bed. Oh, aren't the bluebells pretty? I love bluebells so much. <laughs> so yeah, the little grape hyacinths and things that have crept out of that little patch. I'll have to try and dig up and replace. But, yeah, and obviously do a little bit of weeding. <laughs> so, I might, I know I was going to do a rose trellis type thing. I don't know what you'd call it, a rose. Um, there's a proper name for it, isn't it? Like the tall things that climbing plants <laughs> climb up. Um, I'll, show, I'll show you where I want it to go. This is the bit actually right next to that willow thing. So we've got this, which close up really just looks like a big mess. So if I stand back, you can see, no, you can't really see, it's still a big mess, but it's actually a circular wall feature that we inherited from the previous owners. These little things here were actually completely buried under brambles uh, behind the well there. <laughs> um, so, They've sort of been just put there for the time being to keep safe. This um, ash, is it an ash? I think it is. I can't dig it up because it is right in the middle of this structure. So I'm going to have to try and weed kill this, unfortunately, and try to try and get rid of it because it really is in the way. But also inherited was this rose here which is a lovely white rose and this here which is a pink rose and I'm pretty sure I don't know about the white rose actually that might just be an ordinary shrub rose but this pink one I'm sure is a type of climbing rose so it was a really strange place to put it in within this circular thing actually you can just about see the centre there's like a, a can you see that sort of moss covered stone bit in the centre. It was originally going to be my little herb garden area and it kind of has been. I planted sage. If ever you're a beginner in herb growing, I'd start with sage if I were you. This was dug up at our old house and look at it, it has spread, it has flourished. So that came with us and is uh, a pretty old plant now. I probably ought to trim some areas back because I'm guessing the fresh green growth will taste better than where it's gone yellow. But anyway, the rosemary was a tiny weeny weeny plant about a hand that high, hand width high, that my parents gave me when they were staying here. They picked it up somewhere. Um, that's flourishing, that's doing really well. Also, they also gave me a, a thyme that hasn't lasted, but I planted that down there. But you can see these green, these leaves here, look. This is still my mystery herb. I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> I'll have to do that app. Did I do that app last year? I can't remember. Perhaps I did discover what it is and I've forgotten. But th these um, are the remnants of last year's flowers so I can cut them back. Anyway, <laughs> I'm rambling. What I wanted to do was make a, uh, a tall, I hope you can hear me over the traffic. I'm trying to talk close to the speaker, um, microphone even. So the plan is just to do a tall uh, sort of round structure, I suppose, and then tie up this rose to climb up it. And that will at least uh, free the rest of the area to be a proper herb garden. Because there's actually space. There's nothing growing from this side here so we can definitely grow some more herbs in that bit I think. So that was the plan. Hang on let me change my other glasses. I feel weird talking to you in sunglasses. It feels like, it just feels a little bit rude. <laughs> there we are. That feels a little better. So yeah I had planned on doing that today but I've just actually just relaxed a bit more than I had planned. I'm a bit tired. We actually went out yesterday. We went to um, went to a couple of shops near Bristol. We went to HomeSense and The Range and Hobbycraft. 
and I'm absolutely exhausted today. Um, so I'm just taking it easy and I can imagine that this willow project is going to drag on a little bit <laughs> like the archway of last year. Do you remember that from last year? So I actually have a little bit of a clip for you from, I don't know, about three or four weeks ago with a little archway update. So I'll pop that in now. So let's talk about the archway, shall we? <laughs> Old viewers will know I spent like most of May, probably June and probably July, and maybe a bit of August <laughs> trying to make this archway to take you from the uh, main bit of the garden. Uh, it's all a bit messy at the moment, which is this. Uh, through to what we're calling the wild garden. So I'm filming this towards the end of March and um, I stood here about three or four weeks ago thinking, look, the archway survived the winter. And um, I spoke too soon. We had a gale, my uh, chair fell over, quite a lot fell over <laughs> and, um, and this fell apart pretty much. So me and Rain have been tackling the brambles. I'll give you a quick peek at what it looks like now. And uh, we've got to the point where I now need to tackle the wild rose that I planted a few years ago um, just because it, I love the white wild rose flowers. So that is this plant here that has fallen all over the branch of that silver birch. There are some brambles in there still that we need to tackle but I can't get to them until the rose is sorted out. And the rose is going to obviously, I'm hope, well I'll say obviously, and I'm hopefully going to be able to trail the rose right over the archway. So it's got to the point where me and Rain can't continue very much doing the brambles until I've sorted out this archway. So I'll come out on my own this morning to see. Uh, well, not quite on my own. I have some help <laughs> to uh, see if I can fix this. Right, I think I'm going to need a ladder. So, uh, this is the result of my work. And I'm actually really quite pleased with it. It looks, it's quite sturdy. I could probably keep going and make it perfect but, or well, not perfect but better, but it was really difficult work and actually when I was doing it the sun was out and right in my eyes. So anyway I'm just making excuses, I can't be bothered to carry on. So that's that, that's going to be, and I've started tying in the roses um, and I'll show you again when that's, when that bit's finished. And this is what the archway is looking like today. Um, it seems to have twisted a bit. Yeah, it's twisted I think since I last showed you. I really can't remember what the situation was actually when I last showed you a bit of the archway, but obviously I need to do a bit more work because this rose is now falling over here and we need that up there over the archway. We've got one up there actually because uh, that will, I'm hoping that once actually the just plants are growing over it and are tied in, that the plants will provide some of the support. But yeah, there's a definite twist going on. I'm guessing that is possibly due to uh, some of the plants pulling it back. And it's come forward here a little bit. I'm not sure that's working. And on this side, I still need to tie in Oh, one of the roses has naturally gone to it, but we've got this climbing rose here. Um, I've got to pull that forward and tie that in as well. And I might actually just work on the structure a little more, try and get it a little more stable. And while I've got the mallet out, I might try pushing this back a bit trying to get that support a little straighter. So now it's time to take Merlin out for his afternoon walk and then we're having a Chinese takeaway to celebrate my birthday. 
I know it's been a week since you saw my birthday vlog, but I'm actually only filming this the nearest weekend to that. I'm trying to sort of get a little ahead of myself. So my last vlog actually hasn't gone onto the internet yet. I'm filming ahead so that hopefully I can keep the stress levels of weekly vlogs a bit lower than they were last time I did weekly vlogs. But yeah, time to take Merlin out. He's a bit of a problem at the moment, I have to say. The cows are back in the field. There they are over there. And uh, turns out we have a dog that just loves eating cow pats. So even when they're not, these are quite chilled cows. They're pregnant already and they're quite chilled. They don't mind us being in the field at all. They're not much interested. But walking him through the field is almost it's just a nightmare because he's just trying to eat the cow pats the whole time. And then the, guard, the lower garden that we've got, where I would rather he do his business, is covered in rabbit poo and he loves that and all. So <laughs> it's, uh, he's got to go in the car and uh, be taken out for a walk, unfortunately. Okay, let's go find him. Good boy. Oh my gosh, it's so lovely to be out in. I've got short sleeves on. We haven't had, this is our first warm weather this year. It's so nice. I'm sorry, there seems to be no break in the traffic today. It's a busy day. It's a lovely, sunny spring day. So I think everybody's uh, taking the opportunity to go out somewhere now that we can go out and meet people outside here in, in the UK. So I'm, so I'm having to shout a little bit. Sorry, I hope you can hear me okay. Anyway, hello, good morning. I have a feeling I was wearing this exact outfit in the last clip where I spoke to you, but that was actually about a week ago. So I have washed it since then, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> Merlin's having a mad moment. <laughs> right, so. <laughs> Yeah, so what was I saying? It's about a week later and I'm finally getting around to planting those plants that I got for my, on my birthday. So I'm gonna make use of my birthday and Christmas presents from my parents. These knee pads, I'm gonna give them a try because I am try, I am um, planting different flowers all around the garden. So this might actually be quite useful. And a really nice trowel. I'm gonna look after this. Um, yeah, I needed a new trowel. So, very pleased to have that. I just thought I'd fill you in on what I'm doing today. The garden is looking really nice. Harvey has been. It looks so much nicer than when you last saw it when I was bringing the willow up. Harvey is the guy that comes and mows it for us and it just looks so nice when he's finished. Um, so yeah, I had to run out here and pick up all the sticks that we had sort of spread over the floor for amusing Merlin while we were out here. Can you see that? Any cute? <laughs> Back, back. 
So having dragged all that willow up to the top garden, I've now watched some tutorials on how to make a rose support or plant support with willow. And the thing people do is actually start with poking their main structure pieces of willow around something like this. <laughs> Um, so this is just perfect. So I've come back down to the lower garden where I've got my supply of willows So it's probably easier here anyway And um, I'm gonna have a go just here. Look at the rhubarb already growing nicely That rhubarb has been that must be the oldest rhubarb plant on the planet unless they're all like 30 years old I don't know anyway <laughs> um, Oh no, my battery's running out Oh Damn it. Okay, anyway, I wanted to get started today. I don't suppose I'll have time to finish this before it gets too dark, but yeah, I wanted to give it a go and hopefully I'll have time to finish tomorrow and show you, but uh, if not, it'll be next week. Fingers crossed, if the, wind, if the weather stays this nice, I mean, it's not warm. We get a chilly wind up here on the hill, but we've had so we've had like two or three weeks with hardly any rain. It's been really nice. So yeah, let's let's get going. So if your mindset is like a market, no, it's not. <laughs> folks I think it's time to call it a day it's pretty near bedtime and I'm running out of light and yeah this basically looks like a whole load of um, well I don't want to swear on um, on my YouTube channel but I think you get the gist <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks on YouTube is it so um, yeah my sticks keep cracking obviously fresh off the plant is still not quite bendy enough for the thick bits at least um, yeah they're just constantly cracking and it just sticks out and then it looks rubbish so I am a bit disappointed um, I'll persevere though perhaps I can get it I, I, I was just getting in the swing of the weaving thing but I'm gonna need to cut down some a lot more willow definitely I'll carry on tomorrow, see if I can improve it a little. Wow, the, the late evening birds are really chatting to each other around here, which is lovely. Oh, traffic, come on, at this time of the evening. The traffic's been so busy today. It, it's been impossible to hear yourself think. I cannot complain though because I just do feel so grateful to have this outdoor space. I know so many people have been stuck indoors and yeah, feeling very grateful not just to have our own, oh my goodness, shish, <laughs> not just to have our own garden space but also this view that we've got it makes, makes you not feel trapped, you know, makes you feel like you've got all this open area around you and oh I just couldn't feel more grateful for this in, in this lockdown I don't know how I would have coped otherwise I would have just had to have gone for extremely long walk you know a one walk a day would have been quite a long walk for me I think I'd have been hiding behind trees and um, anyway <laughs> So I shall take myself off to bed. I think we're having a barbecue tomorrow, weather permitting. It's meant to be dry, which I said earlier, but yeah, even colder than it was today. So we shall see, it might end up being an indoor barbecue, but hopefully it will be our first of the year and Merlin's first barbecue. So, oh, that's weird because lo both, Loki and our previous dog Ziggy, they just love to barbecue. I mean, what dog wouldn't would there really when there's always a spare sausage on there? Um, right, anyway, I shall take myself off to bed. Did I say that once already? 
I might have done. Sorry, I'm rambling and still a bit nervous talking to you again in the camera. <laughs> Um, it's been fun though being back and I hope if you're new here it'd be lovely to meet meet you please do introduce yourself please do introduce yourself in the comments below I'd love to say hi and if you are a return watcher yeah thank you very much for coming back it's great to see you again and um, if you're enjoying watching and you haven't done already please hit subscribe and the thumbs up like Thing. that really does help the channel out and um, hopefully more people will get to see it as well and see all my fun willow disaster shenanigans because who wouldn't want to see that honestly <laughs> good night I'll see you tomorrow <laughs> well, it's the end of the weekend and I'm afraid I didn't finish the willow thing, the willow plant support today. I've just been so tired. Something I didn't tell you yesterday actually is that I had my vaccination on Thursday morning. And although I get little moments where I feel okay, a lot of the time I got I got really ill on Friday and um, it has wiped me out a little bit and I'm still getting headaches. So with this wind that you might be able to hear, sorry if it's messing with the sound, um, I just didn't want to be outside in, in the cold. It's a really cold wind this weekend. So um, I'm afraid that's gonna be, it is gonna end up being one of these ongoing projects. Um, I really enjoyed doing the willow weaving though, that little fence last week, earlier in the week. No, that was a week ago. Um, yeah, I could see that being something I really get into. Let me know in the comments if you've ever had a try at willow weaving. I know my kids came home with like a mini willow basket from when they were at guides and it's the sort of thing that sometimes you get the opportunity to try so yeah let me know if you have any homemade little baskets at home battery ran out and now I haven't got a clue what I was saying I will get back into the habit of all this <laughs> um, oh willow weaving oh yes let me know in the comments if you've got any handmade willow items um, in your home or you've tried it before. I'd love to know what you made. Tell me what you made. So I'm gonna call it a day for this vlog. I'm trying to come back with a sort of rotating system of doing one week. So I'm slightly distracted. Merlin's looking at me through the window which is cute. Um, one week filming and then the following week editing and then it will go live at the beginning of the week after that so these vlogs will always be like a week and a bit out of date but I think that's the only way I can manage fitting in everything else that I need to do as well so I hope that works out it'd be really nice to get on doing weekly vlogs again it's been last I think the last couple of years I was just vlogging here and there whenever we were doing something a bit more interesting whereas um, I think the year before I did a weekly the year before that for about a year and a half I did a regular weekly vlog so it's back on that train I'm gonna give it another try um, yeah it's quite exciting oh and also I'm swapping to, from iMovie which is the very basic video editing suite to Final Cut Pro I've just had a quick look at it and it looks a bit tricky. I'm not used to using letters. I like using my mouse and clicking about, but it doesn't seem possible to do that. Um, so I'm gonna have to get used to using letters as commands. I don't know if I'm talking any sense whatsoever. But this video that you're watching will be edited in Final Cut Pro. So I'm quite excited about that because I have to admit, I was starting to struggle with iMovie. I just didn't have the layers of sound versus of sound and pictures that I needed. I needed more layers. 
um, you probably got no clue what I'm talking about because I wouldn't have done before I'd ever tried editing videos but wish me luck I hope that it might improve some of these videos we'll see so yeah we had a lovely afternoon today we had our first barbecue of the season it was just about warm enough until the sun went behind the house so I'm glad we did it quite early and then took the dog for a long walk and then that's the end of the day really so I shall leave it there and say thank you very much for watching once again if you're new here please do hit subscribe because it'll be lovely to see you again and I'll see you again next time take care bye